Good morning. Welcome to worship on this uh, Independence Day holiday weekend. Uh, we're glad to have you all with us here this morning. Uh, and those joining us on the stream, we're glad to have you as well. Just a few announcements this morning as we get started. Uh, it is the first Sunday of the month, so we will be communing this morning. Uh, we will be communing at the altar rail. Uh, just follow the ushers' instructions, and they will get you up here uh, and get you on your way. Um, if you are a guest or a visitor uh, among us, we are glad to have you with us. Um, and if you feel moved by the Holy Spirit to come and uh, commune at the Lord's table this morning, uh, feel welcome at this table. Um, you may have noticed around the church there are more and more signs that Vacation Bible School uh, is coming quickly. Uh, Vacation Bible School will start two weeks from tomorrow. Um, so make sure that you read in the announcements about Vacation Bible School, about how you can help. Uh, they, we always need lots of donations. Uh, we need lots of helpers. So if you are so moved, uh, we could uh, continue to use your help. Just talk with, with Andrea Sears and she will um, uh, get you set up. There's also information about Vacation Bible School back on the, the bulletin board uh, as you go out uh, by the gym. There's a, an education bulletin board there, and there's some information there as well. All right, I think that's it. Uh, make sure you check out all the announcements uh, in the uh, sheets uh, that you received on your way in this morning. There's lots of announcements there. All right, any other announcements I need to make? Excellent. Uh, let's begin our worship this morning then in uh, using the uh, brief order of confession and forgiveness. Uh, please stand if you are able. We begin our worship this morning in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. St. John, in his first letter to the church, teaches us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins... God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a few moments to reflect on our own sinfulness and our own need to confess before Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is, We Praise You, O God. That's uh, in the green book, uh, 241, and the words will be on the screen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and to constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Make us who came from many nations with many different languages a united people. Defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with the authority of government the spirit of wisdom that there might be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful. And in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. We ask all of this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We continue our worship with the reading of the Lessons. The first lesson for this, what is this? First, second of Pentecost? What day of Pentecost? I think it's the third, actually. It used to be in the bulletin. It's not there anymore. Yeah, it's the fourth. The The fourth fourth Sunday Sunday of Pentecost. Pentecost. Yes. Let's start again. The first lesson for this, the fourth Sunday in Pentecost, uh, is found in Exodus chapter 12, beginning with the 31st verse. During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and herds, as you have said, and go, and also bless me. The Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave the country, for otherwise, they said, we will all die. So the people took their dough before the yeast was added and carried it on their shoulders in kneading troughs wrapped in clothing. The Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and clothing. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed toward the people, and they gave them what they asked for, so they plundered the Egyptians. The Israelites journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth. There were about 600,000 men on foot, besides women and children. Many other people went up with them, and also large droves of livestock, both flocks and herds. With the dough the Israelites had brought from Egypt, they baked loaves of unleavened bread. The dough was without yeast because they had been driven out of Egypt and did not have time to prepare food for themselves. Now the length of time the Israelite people lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of the 430 years, to that very day, All the Lord's divisions left Egypt. Here ends the first lesson. Our second lesson this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning with the 12th verse. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. 
We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the Old Covenant is read. It has not been removed, because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Here ends the second lesson. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternity. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, that's wrong on the screen, according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That was my fault. I forgot to change that. Imagine that. We're beginning with the 31st verse here from John chapter 8. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, for the last few weeks, we've been working on this memory verse, um, so we should have it down pretty good now. This will be the last week we use this particular verse, and we'll have a new one next week. So uh, let's practice uh, 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. All right, let's do that one more time. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay, let's uh, try that from memory. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay, very good. Um, take that verse to heart, um, pull it out once in a while, and meditate on it, and uh, practice it again. Uh, keep it there in your memory. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful promise from God uh, to rely on. All right, this morning my title of my message is Freedom That Lasts. We uh, celebrate our nation's 246th anniversary uh, of its independence from Great Britain this weekend. We celebrate uh, the precious rights and freedoms that were wrested away from a tyrant, uh, from the British monarchy. Yet, if you were listening to our lessons today, you would have discovered that freedom is also a major theme throughout Holy Scripture. Now, those scriptures that we read here this morning each touched on this idea that God has a freedom to offer us. Indeed, in our gospel this morning, uh, Jesus says to us that there is another truth, another freedom 
more precious than even the freedom that we celebrate on this Independence Day weekend. There's a spiritual freedom that we are offered from God, a freedom that is eternal, uh, as is all things uh, in our universe. Someday they will pass away. Uh, but God and the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and our place in it will not pass away. So let me give you a focus question. What does Jesus require of you if you are to acquire and retain the spiritual freedom that lasts? Through much toil and sweat and sacrifice and blood, our founding forefathers and mothers won political freedom from the greatest monarchical power the world had ever known, at least to that date. Many American colonists at the time described this winning of freedom as nothing short of a divine miracle. For such a small, relatively weak group of people to break free from the greatest world uh, power the world had ever seen uh, does seem miraculous, even to us today, if you stop and think about it. In many respects, our American experience is analogous to what Jesus accomplished for humanity on the cross. Ever since our first spiritual father and mother disobeyed God, our human race has been enslaved to the devil and his greatest weapon, sin. Jesus, by his sacrificial death on the cross, has set us free from this diabolical power. That is, the truth found in the gospel, the truth that Jesus uh, shed blood on the cross is greater than the power of the devil and rescues us from sin, hell, and eternal death. So I want you to understand here, we've been rescued from something. Our American nation was rescued from tyranny. Our spiritual freedom has wrested us from the tyranny of sin. Do you see the analogy there? But that's only half the story. Okay? Our founding parents understood that breaking free from something is not complete freedom. Freedom from something always implies the freedom to something else. That is, freedom always implies a concomitant responsibility to not squander that freedom in dissolute living. Because we all know what happens when we just go off and do our own thing, right? Anarchy breaks out. Our founding fathers and mothers, after winning freedom from tyranny, called the American people to live under a constitutional government. That government was created and established at the Constitutional Convention held in Philadelphia in the summer of 1787. Supposedly, as Ben Franklin was leaving the last session of the Constitutional Convention, someone called out to him and asked, Mr. Franklin, are we to have a republic or a monarchy? To which he purportedly replied, a republic, if we can keep it. The implication of that statement was that it wasn't enough to break free of Great Britain, and it wasn't even enough to declare independence and write a constitution. No, the people of the United States would have to be responsible for protecting and nurturing their constitution and their rights that were guaranteed in that Constitution each and every day if they were to forever remain a free and democratic people. In a similar manner, 
Jesus calls people to take up responsibility, a spiritual responsibility to trust, to serve, to obey, and to follow him if we are to remain a spiritually free people for all time. In our gospel lesson this morning, uh, in John there, uh, 8, 34, uh, let me read it to you. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. So you'll notice here that slavery uh, involves doing something. Okay, Slavery uh, in Jesus' uh, thinking and Jesus' teaching uh, is doing sin. So it's not enough to just say, Lord, save me. It's not enough just to confess your sins, but you are called out of that sin. Um, So Jesus calls you from sin into something else. And what is it that he calls you to? Well, he tells us in uh, that lesson this morning, John 8, 31, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So let's look at this here. If you hold to my teachings, what's, what's Jesus saying there? He's saying, do the truth. Jesus' teachings are the truth. If you want to live and experience freedom, spiritual freedom to the fullest, you should not just confess your sin, but you should then do the truth. You should follow Jesus' teachings. Because when you do that, you will know the truth. And this know here is not just intellectual knowledge. It's, it's really this whole idea that you become totally familiar uh, with the way of God and you commit yourself to this way of God as your way of life. And when you do that, that truth sets you free, spiritually free forever. Indeed, Uh, Jesus uses the word freedom as a synonym for eternal life and for discipleship and for salvation. So when we read this this passage, 31 and 32, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Think of it in these terms. This, This truth will give you eternal life. This truth will give you discipleship. It'll teach you how to be a disciple in my name. It will give you salvation. It will save you. I know that um, following the way of Christ is not always the most exciting life you could live. It's not always the most exhilarating or thrilling life. It's not as shiny as some of the other experiences that you could uh, have in this life. But know this. It is the most important thing that you will ever do. For you are being given the privilege of working side by side with Jesus to build his kingdom on earth. We don't just pray Uh, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We join with Christ in making that come to pass. And as I mentioned earlier in in this message, um, all these other shiny, wonderful, exciting, thrilling things that the world offers you, they'll all pass away. They'll eventually end. But your eternal life will not end. That's why they call it eternal life. Your salvation will never end. Your following Jesus will never end. Your place in the kingdom will never end. As Jesus said, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. In the long view, it's worth it.
Martin Luther had a lot to say about this passage. This was one of his favorite scripture texts. This is uh, John 8, 31 to 36. And I want to share it with you from one of his sermons, what he told his flock. Luther writes, Christ told the Jews that they would not understand his message until they crucified him and lifted him up. In the meantime, he consoles himself with the knowledge that whatever he preached, he had learned from his Father in heaven, and that whatever he did was pleasing to God and would endure. Every Christian must find similar comfort when the world will not tolerate our work and words, when the world regards whatever we say as lies and persecutes us because of it. That really rings true for our current situation, doesn't it? We must declare, I know that my doctrine and work are God's word and work, and I do not care who is angry and looks askance at me. God grant that this always and in every circumstance be my position. To learn to know the truth of the gospel. That's our faith challenge. But not to just know it as an intellectual exercise, but to know it as our way of life and to live out those truths faithfully each and every day. That, good people, is the true freedom that lasts. Thanks be to God. Amen. Would you confess with me uh, the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. As we prepare uh, to go uh, to the Lord in prayer, uh, let me first ask, are there any joys you'd like to share with the congregation this morning? Birthdays, anniversaries? Uh, I have on the screen there, they're telling me that Judy Smith is in rehab after falling. Uh, but this is not Pastor Judy Smith, right? It's a different Judy Smith, correct? Okay. So we'll want to pray for uh, Judy Smith uh, this morning. Um, also want to pray for my mother-in-law, Mary Hoover. She's having major back surgery on Tuesday. And I appreciate you keeping her in, our, in your prayers this week. Um, anyone else? That we should pray for. Yes. Well, congratulations. Now, is that a prayer request or a joy? Okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I just couldn't help myself. Well, congratulations to the whole Shiders. Uh, 55 years of marriage. That's awesome. Yes. Okay. All right. Pastor Judy uh, has uh, had a reoccurrence of some back pain, so we want to pray for her. Anyone else? Yes. Okay, so the family and friends of Barry, 
Matamor, okay, and especially for his wife Sharon, okay, and that's your cousin you said, okay, our condolences, other, other prayer requests, or Joyce, of course we'll want to lift up and celebrate our independence, our freedoms uh, that we enjoy here in the United States. Um, not take, not take uh, it for granted. Um, what a, just what a tremendous uh, nation that we live in. Let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, you are first and foremost the God of freedom. For you strive to free the world from tyranny of every form. But especially that most pernicious form of tyranny, uh, sin, hell, death, and the devil. And yet, Lord, we are so reluctant at times um, to leave uh, that life behind, that, that life of subjugation, and to to follow you into the, the wide open spaces of spiritual freedom won for us by your son, Jesus. So Lord, forgive us for all of those times when we've turned our back on you and the freedom you offer. All those times we've turned our back on following Jesus and gone our own way. Lord, we repent today. We turn to you and we pray, Father, for inspiration and encouragement and strength um, to not just confess our sin, but to turn away and leave that sin behind, to leave that slavery behind, and to follow Jesus and to, to do his, his teaching, to, to do his truth in the world. Uh, so, Lord, come empower us to do this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we uh, prayed earlier in our prayer of the day for a wisdom for our leaders. Um, and we renew that prayer here during this prayer time. For Lord, it is a, it is a, a strange and, and difficult, uh, tense time in our nation and in our world. Um, and Lord, sometimes we, we look at the problems that are stacking up and we, we struggle to know uh, what to do. Uh, we, we don't seem to possess the wisdom that we require uh, to be able to push through and to, to survive and thrive in the midst of these, these problems and to find solutions to these problems. And so we come to you humbly this day. We bow our heads before you and we pray for your wisdom. We pray, Lord, for your truth. We pray, Lord, for the humility to be governed by that truth. We pray, Lord, for um, the, the strength and encouragement to, um, to implement that truth in our daily lives and in our corporate lives as the church and as, as a nation. Um, may we continue, Lord, to be people who shine the light of Christ into the world. For truly, Christ is the solution. Christ is the wisdom. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you praying for people with special needs. Each of us has our own prayer list. We lift it up to you. We lift up our prayer list here at the church as well. And we pray for those that we uh, mentioned here just a few moments ago. We pray for Judy Smith as she has fallen and is now in rehab. We pray for complete recovery. We pray, Father, for uh, my mother-in-law, Mary Hoover, as she prepares to go into surgery. We ask, Lord, that you uh, give her a successful surgery and a successful recovery. Um, we pray for Pastor Judy. Uh, she's had a return of back pain. We pray for healing. And we pray for your comfort and consolation to be upon the family and friends of Barry Matamore. Uh, we ask, Lord, that 
you receive Barry into your heavenly kingdom um, as he passes from this life to life eternal. Uh, we pray especially for his wife Sharon uh, in this time of loss that you sustain her uh, and carry her through the very difficult days, weeks, and months ahead. Finally, Lord, we, we come to you and we humbly thank you. We thank you for this life of faith that you've given to each of us. We thank you for this church family that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for the gospel, for the Bible, and for Jesus. Lord, what more could we need? Um, because these, these things added together equal freedom. And we thank you for that freedom, that eternal life, that, that salvation uh, that you've promised to each of us. So Lord, um, we come, we praise you, we thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your grace and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now share with God our tithes and our offerings. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection 
open to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Excuse me. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And so we give thanks to you for the salvation that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in this Holy Supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then our Lord took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of your sin. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated.
Let's try this again. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his through this same Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song this morning is America the Beautiful. It's not in the hymnal. It's up on the screen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.